All right, uh, we'll begin the presentation now. Um, so thank you all for coming. This is uh, Sean Bentley. Uh, my name my name is Sean Bentley. I'm with Desai Solutions, an application engineer. And also with me, I have Omar Zoni, who's a SOWRX technical manager. He's been with SOWRX. Hey, 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 Omar. He's been with SOWRX for eight years or so. And uh, can you can you speak a little bit about your roles at uh, SOWRX, Omar? Give a little introduction. Sure, guys. So th thanks for joining uh, the webinar. So my roles, um, current, uh, my, what I'm currently responsible for is kind of these new platform tools. So the um, tools that are kind of rolling down from us from Simulia. So currently this one, uh, Structural Simulation Engineer, Structural Professional Engineer, I think is what it's being recalled or branded now. And um, the next tool that's rolling out, which is going to have some explicit stuff. So, Great. but in the past, I've been responsible for the, the simulation products. And um, I came over to SolidWorks from ANSYS. So I've been in this realm for, for a, uh, you know, a long time. So I'm glad you guys are on. And thanks, uh, Sean, for the opportunity to present. Great. Thank, thank you, Omar. So the way we'll run this presentation, I'll be presenting sort of the first half, I suppose, and then Omar will pick it up towards the end there with, uh, with some examples he'd like to show as well. So the topic for today is a uh, Simulia product called Structural Simulation Engineer SSE. Now, uh, I'd like to start off with a poll question. Let me go ahead and launch that right now here. So since uh, one of the key topics of the day, we're going to be talking a lot about nonlinear analysis inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium and then moving up to SSE with it. Just want to get a little bit of a sense of uh, uh, what kind of group we have with us today, what the general use that you guys have been working with. So I'm getting a lot of responses here. About half have voted. Give just a little bit more time. Make sure everybody has a chance to... Put in some responses. All right, looks like we got a mostly everybody's voted now. It looks like so. Uh, it seems like the predominant response is uh, I've got a group that uh, have rarely used simulation premium, uh, maybe once or twice, forty-one percent, and then uh, about thirty percent frequently use it. So, and then the other two are a little lower on the percentage scale, but those seem to be the two predominant answers: is frequently and rarely. Okay, let me see if I can go ahead and share that as with you too. All right, great. So I think we're in the right right ballpark here. Um, so let's move on. Now, uh, what I'd like to start with is nonlinear analysis can be a pretty abstract uh, idea. Um, so I'd like to start with an analogy to uh, help set the set the tone here. So the way I think of nonlinear analysis is a lot like a rally car race. In a lot of ways okay the uh, car has to stay on track and sometimes it can get a little lost and off track um, but uh, so in a lot of ways when you run your nonlinear study it's trying to stay on the equilibrium path to try to get you to the right answer to the finish line now uh, and honestly though the um, driver has a lot of control over the rally car if, if they really want if the goal was just to get to the finish line and not to get there quickly the driver could slow down around a lot of turns and always stay on the track. So nonlinear analysis actually is a little more similar to this type of a rally. Here we have marbles rolling down the uh, beach. So as they go around tight turns, some of them, many of them can make it to the finish line in this on the simple track, um, but some of them do not, like this red number three fell off track. So, and in those cases, we might get a solver failed type of a message. Um, so frequently we can get to the finish line if the problem's simple enough, but for more complex tracks, more complex problems, they can fall off the track. So uh, one last step on this analogy is uh, when you're nonlinear, with your nonlinear analysis, or our track is like the load response curve. If it's a simple linear track, it's very easy for the marble to roll down that track, the solver to solve or to make its way down the track. But for more complex, studies uh, like this nonlinear track we have here um, the marble is going to have to roll all around and try to stay on track now we're not going to be talking about marbles this whole session here just just this analogy just to help uh, illustrate some ideas and I'll, I might bring this analogy back up as we move through the presentation so really the focus on uh, what we're going to be focusing on in this presentation and we're going to start with a mattress uh, example with a foam block talk about some of the struggles with running it 
with uh, Sour Simulation Premiums. It's sort of like maybe you're trying to run it with a big marble, allowing a big marble to roll down the track. Then uh, after we go through some of those struggles, we'll introduce SSE and then uh, we'll export our our Sour Simulation Premium study into SSE and think of it as maybe using like a smaller marble, one that'll uh, roll more uh, quickly down the track, but also stay within the confines of the track a little better perhaps too. Then uh, I'll pass it over to Omar later on, where he'll talk about a uh, portable, portable projector bracket example uh, with a three-point bending test, and then a few other examples that he plans on showing as well. And then finally, towards the end of the session, we'll have some time for some Q&A. So starting off with this uh, mattress example, um, the design of a mattress, uh, it, it may involve many different materials, uh, many nonlinear materials, in fact, some foams and maybe even a stack of these. So in order to get the design right, it may take a lot of testing and, um, and a lot of that testing can be done in a tool, perhaps like SOLIDWORKS or other simulation tools. So here, I'm going to start simple with this uh, example, with just a one, one material, one foam material. And then later on, once I get this to work, then maybe we can add on a stack of foam materials and try that out too. So the goals of this analysis are to try to compress the foam by about 75% of its thickness. In other words, 37 and a half millimeters out of its 50 millimeter thickness. So a pretty big amount of compression. And for those of you who had some experience with uh, simulation premium nonlinear, um, compression can be a tricky thing to, to work with in this tool. And then the, the goal after we do that compression, we want to try to output the load versus deflection curve to see what that, what that racetrack actually looks like after we're done setting the marble down it. So here's a little paraphrase of some of my attempts to use Sourx Simulation Premium to run this analysis. I started off with the full block, ran that one, and it failed. I tried making some changes. Yes, I adjusted the singularity elimination factor to zero, as well as a variety of other solver changes that I recommend in one of my nonlinear troubleshooting guides on our blog. And uh, repeatedly, run after run, it just would not converge. Till finally, maybe this last one, where I kind of condense it down to something like this, a quarter model with uh, to help the mesh to make different layers as well that are bonded together. And uh, I was finally able to get this to run. So if you look at the animation, though, right? oh well, it ran, but uh, did it did it give me the right answer though? Um, in, if you look closely at the animation, you can kind of tell there's some things that are a little funny with it. Uh, for one, in order to get it to run, I turned off friction. So and that can have an impact on our results, of course. And then also, I used very coarse draft quality elements and. Draft quality elements, as many of you know, it's going to overly can give you overly stiff results too. So after I, I went ahead though, and I wanted to see what our racetrack looked like, what our load displacement curve looked like. So uh, based on all the ways I had to try to get this study to work, I had to uh, go into Microsoft Excel and do a little bit of post processing to, to be able to generate that graph. So a little bit of work to actually just give me the graph out of out of the result I saw on the screen. We'll see with SSE later on, it'll be a little more direct than this. So, uh, oh, and then finally, I wanted to try it again with friction. So let's call this study number 11 or trial 11. Uh, but when I turn on friction again, I've, maybe many of you have played with nonlinear studies, recognize this type of behavior, very unstable. Can't really, couldn't really get it to go much further than this. Uh, this was a 90 minute run time and spinning my wheels quite a bit to, to get down the racetrack. So this is really where SSC starts to come into the picture, is for helping with problems like this. So what is SSC anyway? Uh, SSC stands for uh, Structural Simulation Engineer. It's a Smoothio product, and uh, it's a very powerful tool. It has uh, the Abacus solver built into it, a market leader uh, solver, uh, FFE, F, F, uh, FEA code rather, that allows us to solve structural problems. Um, also has more robust contact and some advanced meshing tools that we don't see in Simulation Premium, SOLIDWORKS nonlinear analysis, and also a wider range of material models than what we have in Simulation Premium as well. 
Also, it, it uh, offers some integration. Even though SSE is a standalone tool, uh, we can transfer sa your SOLIDWORKS model directly to it at the uh, push of a button. And then uh, if you do update your SOLIDWORKS model at the, again, the push of a button, you can see your SSE model update and just have to hit rerun to see the new results. So what is SSE used for? Uh, well, the types of simulations that are going to be, uh, or that are popular to use it for are nonlinear static. It's probably the one key one. But then also uh, we can use it for many vibration and buckling problems, frequency, buckling, modal dynamic, and even thermal problems as well it supports. And the types of problems that will probably uh, fall into its wheelhouse that for the most part and that have already, I think Omar has some examples of this too, that uh, falls into its wheelhouse are gasket sealing, rubber bushing, and also metal plasticity with contacts. So now the, the workflow looks kind of like this. I already walked you through the first few steps of the workflow, but it looks maybe something like this where you might start off, uh, you, you, you may start off with a highly nonlinear problem that you want to try to solve. I want to try to figure out what that, uh, what that low displacement curve might look like. That's one popular uh, analysis result. Then uh, you might try to run this in SOLIDWORKS simulation, and for very high, highly nonlinear problems, sometimes it'll struggle, sometimes it won't finish. And then we can transfer the study over to SSE, and then uh, it'll automatically bring in the loads, boundary conditions, your mesh settings. We'll make a few tweaks to the mesh settings in SSE, perhaps, and, and also to the loads and boundary conditions, and run that study. And uh, hopefully we can get to the finish line. And then we can make some changes, update, and if we do need to, after we make some design changes, we can use the push of a button to update automatically the uh, study and then rerun it and get our new result. Now, uh, you remember our problem that we were dealing with here was with the, this foam block. Uh, so where we left off our story was, uh, was at this step here. So I'm going to show you the next few steps here, which were, are the transfer with the connector step, the uh, looking, I'll take a look over the boundary conditions that came in and we'll run this study and see what that, see what the results look like. So here I have my SOLIDWORKS model um, already simplified to some extent in the way that uh, SSC um, may, may like as far as the, the types of materials, fixtures, um, contact, etc. And well, I'll, turn on, I'll start off by turning on this add-in. Once you install SSC, it adds this simulation connector. With that add-in activated, I'll be able to create a new simulation. And um, you can kind of see some of the, you see some of the things that are, are going to transfer over from my existing nonlinear static study. The fixture, the roller sliders, the actual load being created in this case by a on flat faces fixture, uh, all those things are going to transfer over as well as materials, uh, but not everything is supported and you'll have to, once you get into SSE, you'll need to make a few edits to that. Now also the way SSE treats contact, it, um, here I have a, just a bonded contact in here as a default, I didn't bother setting up the contact conditions because I, uh, I know that what, what SSE will do with it is it'll create a general contact. It'll, it'll add a no penetration contact between all bodies with a generic coefficient of friction set to 0.1 by default, which of course I can tune these things as well if needed. So it's reading my nonlinear static simulation. Once I hit create simulation, it does take a few minutes. So I've already, I've already taken care of this step. So now I'll, I'll move over to SSE now and show you what, what this simulation looks like once it's, once it's done creating it. So now here I'm in the SSE interface, and you can see how it transferred over those fixtures. Here's my fixed bottom face that I had in my, my simulation premium model, and then also those two sliders, those roller sliders I used for the symmetry. Or you can also use symmetry fixtures. It, is, it just breaks them up a little bit more in detail. Using the sliders uh, makes the tree a little shorter. Then my load is this on flat faces, Tells it to go down by 37.5. You can kind of see how that transferred over as well. 
And uh, also the contact, if I take a look at this contact property, those of you who are familiar with nonlinear analysis uh, inside of simulation premium know that you can basically turn on friction and adjust surface to surface, node to surface. There aren't too many options in simulation premium for adjusting and dealing with contact, whereas in SSE with the Abacus Solver, you have a few additional options for being able to manage your contacts. Okay, even do things like have a have your friction coefficient vary with the contact pressure if you need to be much more detailed. Okay, so a lot more control you have, but for now I'll just leave it as this default friction coefficient of 0.1. And that's applied across the board. Any bodies that interact with each other will have this contact between them. Uh, you can, of course, tweak and bond things together like you're familiar with in SOWERX simulation, but you'll need to do that uh, using some connections. Now, uh, also, what about the mesh? If I take a look at my the mesh I have in this model here, this is not the default mesh. I've already made a few tweaks to it. As you can tell, uh, SOWERX simulation does not have this element type, these are what we call brick elements. Um, and these can be a little more robust for working with uh, certain kinds of co high compression and contact problems. You see I've adjusted their aspect ratio to be a little taller so that when we compress them, they'll reach an aspect ratio closer, about an average of one. Now uh, let me go ahead and delete one of these meshes and just show you the creation of it. Okay, so I've removed the mesh just from one component. And now I'll create a uh, sweep 3D mesh that this allows me to create those brick elements. I'll tell it to be on this body. And I'll say, I want to have uh, five cells through the uh, thickness. So if I go ahead and select mesh, oops, sorry, I do have a question here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, can I question screen not updating? How, how is the screen going? Is it a little slow or what's the... Uh, uh, I don't know how it looks on your end, Omar. Does it look like it's... Uh... Uh, yeah, Sean, it looks fine to me. Okay. Might be it's a little slow for you guys. Um, let me know. i um, not too sure if there's too much I can do about it at the moment, but... Um, okay, getting a couple people we're mentioning here. Uh, quick pull screen. It sounds like the slide deck. Okay, so it might be, uh, yeah, it might just be a little slow for some, for some, but it looks like I'm getting a lot of looks fine. Oh, okay, it was slow during the marbles. All right, so <laughs> that was a little while ago. All right, sorry, I should have paid more attention to that. I'll try to keep on topic, guys. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so uh, where are we at here? So I uh, was creating this mesh here. You can see I can adjust the number of layers. Let's say if I want five layers to the thickness versus, I don't know, maybe eight layers to the thickness. Okay, try doing that in SOWERX Simulation Premium. It's a little tricky. You'd have to split the bodies up, and it can be a little more a little more work involved in trying to tell it. I want two layers through the thickness of my thin sheet metal part. So very convenient control on that. In this case, I'll use a fairly coarse mesh to start with, but these are second order elements. High quality elements is what we call them in SOWERX simulation. So in theory, it would take a lot longer than that the earlier run, the, but we'll see how it does. All right, so there's my my mesh. I've already trans. I've already I've created a mixture of different element types, as you can see. Tet mesh, uh, 3D sweep, another 3D sweep. You can mesh each body with its own mesh settings. Then finally, uh, you can set up some output requests. These are just telling SSC what uh, what results that it should report to you when it's when it's all done running. In this case, I've told it I'm really interested in the um, that. Uh, force versus deflection. So I've told it that up front. So that way I won't have to do a lot of post-processing like I had to do in SOLIDWORKS with Excel, Microsoft Excel, to, to be able to get that curve out, out of the software. It'll be a little more direct here. Um, and then finally, uh, this setting might look a little familiar to some of you. Here I can set up my initial time increment, minimum time increment, and maximum time increment, similar to what you do with the SOLIDWORKS simulation premium nonlinear settings. But also in here, we have some additional stabilization options that can help uh, help you run those tricky studies. All right, so I think that's a lot of the key stuff. Oh, yes, of course, in the materials, it's also on my list here. I just want to show you the additional material models. So here's the SSE material model um, uh, drop-down list basically and uh, let me go back to SOLIDWORKS so you can see a bit of the comparison 
So in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, we have these models, these material models, things like plasticity, three different plasticity models, three different hyperelastic models, some linear elastic models, etc. cetera. Uh, but you see with SSE, um, okay, expands that out a little bit further, okay? Elasticity, elastic, fail strain, fail stress, different hyperelastic and hyperfoam. Okay, so here I've already keyed in a material model that uses this hyperfoam uh, material here to describe the foam brick that I have in the middle. Okay. Um, now, once you have your study all, study all set up, uh, you can run the study. So if I move down to our simulate here. Now, when you go to run the study, uh, you. You, depending on the licensing structure, and Omar, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a there's like a cloud compute pack, I think, that uh, allows you to uh, uh, purchase the, basically cloud cores to be able to run the study over a network. Okay. That's, and then, that's right, yep. And then, uh, so here I can adjust how many, this isn't really adjusting the number of cores, it's more like, uh, I think each one sort of doubles the number of cores it's using roughly. and. Um, so here it's like I'm kind of using one core of the network versus two, four, eight, something along those lines to really speed up that, that solve time. Now, I ran this study just using my local interactive where I just used the uh, four cores on my computer to run it. And uh, I've already got, since it takes some time to run, I've uh, about, uh, this one was 11 minutes. And that compares to uh, my draft quality, no friction model. My draft quality, no friction simulation premium model was 14 minutes. This is a high quality model that run, ran even faster than that draft quality model. Okay, so that really shows us that this, this marble rolls a lot faster down that hill. It's kind of like using a small marble versus simulation premium is kind of a big, big slow marble. Okay. Um, now here we can take a look at some of the results we got. For example, this animation should show a little nicer than the one that was in Sim Premium. Okay, so very high compression problem. Again, that's that's primarily, I think Sim Premium handles the first uh, few percentage of the compression pretty well, but it's it's getting it all the way down here and seeing this, this contact developing on the side and around that curve, that, that becomes the very tricky part for Sim Premium to handle. A lot of tools to be able to cycle through the different steps. Again, those of you familiar with Sim Premium, you have to edit the definition of the plot and kind of walk through the steps that way here. This this tool is pretty much always up on the screen where we can just kind of see what each of those steps looks like. And then also, the uh, finally, that load history curve. Um, I requested that in the output requests, and I've already sort of created the graph here if I just activate it. So here we can see with this curve, Okay, the gradual sloping up. There's the apparently the racetrack our SSC solver is rolling down, per se. Okay, and you can see apparently at about 0.5 newtons, that's when it reaches the full compression for this foam, foam brick. Okay, so I think that's a lot of the key stuff. Um, so I guess to paraphrase or summarize what, we, what we've just done in this example, uh, we took a, we started off with Sourx Simulation Premium. And we struggled to get it to run to to 100% to get it to get that marble to the finish line. We we struggled to get it there. It kept falling off the track. Then we switched over to SSE, and uh, it, it, once we were able to use a different quality mesh, a uh, high quality, and also a uh, brick elements helps a lot. Um, we were able to set up that track so that it, our marble could roll down it a little more stably, and plus we used a smaller marble to get down there faster and to stay within the confines of the track. So now what I'd like to do is maybe, uh, if you're ready, Omar, we'll turn it over to you and uh, you can talk about yep. the portable. Now, how do we wanna, you want me to, I'm gonna make you the presenter here, I think. Yep. Yes. All right, John, if you could just tell me when you um, see uh, the my yep. screen. I see it now. Okay, perfect. So guys, um, I'm going to briefly kind of go over uh, another example. This, uh, it's a three-point bending test. I'm just hoping you guys have heard or maybe potentially seen or maybe even actually done some of these tests. So basically, it's when uh, a structure is basically fixed, um, you know, at these two locations 
or not fixed, but there, there are some constraints here, um, not allowing it to, to move vertically. And then there's a load or a deflection applied um, somewhere, uh, typically in the center of your component. Um, so this is a real common test that, to, that um, you know, assemblies or parts are typically run through. And for us, we are going to do a three-point bending test on an internal bracket for this high-tech speaker. So um, here is basically what our, our test is going to look like. Um, so our bracket is going to be kind of constrained from vertical motion at these two locations. Um, it's made of an acrylic. Um, yeah, the bracket itself or the chassis is made of an acrylic. Um, we have our the stress strain behavior and then the, the, the bottom are made of or the rods are basically made of some alloy steel. So uh, the stiffness in comparison between the rods and the bracket um, is quite different. The rods are much more stiff. So let's take a look at this in SOLIDWORKS. Um, and again, this is a situation where this model looks pretty simple. Um, if you just take a look at it, you know, real quickly. But what's starting to happen is as the, you know, this thing is pushed down, you're starting to get some local buckling here in the, the chassis or the bracket assembly. And, um, you know, in talking with Sean there, are, you know, we tweaked the solver settings. We were actually able to get this thing to run to completion if we changed it to a dynamic analysis. Um, there were also some ways that you could tweak the solver to get it to run uh, to completion as a static analysis. But um, if you leave it at the default, um, it was only running to about 70% of the intended load, right? So we wanted to push this um, bracket 20 millimeters down. And uh, it took about 40 minutes for this to run to just to 70%. So again, this is something that you could potentially solve in SOLIDWORKS simulation. A lot of the examples- I might add, uh, it took four hours to run with that nonlinear dynamic study. Okay. So very long. So changing, changing it to a nonlinear dynamic and getting it to run to completion took four hours. So, you know, if you're in the preliminary design stage um, of your components or, or your parts, it's just not practical to be running four hour analyses when you're gonna be making geometric changes, um, you know, maybe material changes. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense to, to, to run um, an analysis like that. So we pulled it over into SSE. And you know what, as Ryan mentioned, right, the, the most of the, the setup comes over. So our boundary conditions, our loads all come over automatically. Um, we were able to, you know, in this case, it's probably not as important as in the, in the scenario that Ryan showed where he was using a brick mesh um, on the, the foam. Um, but you were able to create a brick mesh here on the, on the, the um, rods, the, the push rod and the, the constraining rods, um, you know, a, a nice swept brick mesh. And the great thing is this thing runs in, you know, about five minutes, the, the initial displacement. And we were also able to take it to kind of a worst case displacement um, loading, which was which is four times what the intended displacement was. And that ran in like 15 minutes. So, you know, a, a problem like this with this level of deformation, right? This, so again, when it finishes, it's actually, oops, let me zoom out a bit. Pause the animation real quickly. Yeah, so this is actually four times that what the intended displacement was. So you can see, right, this is a problem. I, I don't think that this would solve inside of SOLIDWORKS, right? And that's not even all the way displaced. So yeah, this is, you know, four times what the intended displacement is. So again, the, the types of analyses that you can run here inside of um, SSC or SPE as it's being called now, it just opens up a whole new um, kind of realm of nonlinear problems, right? So. And you can, uh, you know, a nice thing with nonlinear analysis is a lot of time you're interested in plastic strain and plastic deformation. So you can take a look at what the plastic deformation is. So this is basically the permanent deformation or permanent strain that's going to be in the model, even if you remove the load, right? So I think in the next step, we actually remove the displacement. And you can see that there's, there's still some permanent um, plastic strain, right? So that's one of the uh, problems that, that we were able to solve. I wanted to show you guys a couple other examples. So this next one is actually a, a rubber seal. So a, probably an axisymmetric analysis that you'd run inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, but let's take a look at what it looks like. So for the initial um, loading is that we're gonna push the seal down to create, uh, to basically close these two parts against each other. And then we're gonna pressurize the inside of the, the seal. So.
And Sean, I'm sure you mentioned that the, the, the way, again, the way SSE or SVE handles contact is a little bit different than the way SOLIDWORKS simulation does in that uh, SSE makes the assumption that um, all of the components are no penetration contacts and it applies a friction coefficient of 0.1. Obviously, you can change that and if you've got components that are bonded, um, you know, you, you can make uh, adjustments for that. But uh, it, it, what it does is it avoids us having to kind of try to figure out what what faces could potentially come into contact and having to set up contact pairs for those faces. So, yeah, it's kind of um, like having a global no penetration contact by default in the study. Yeah, at, at virtually I'm assuming no virtually no cost to the performance or very small cost to the performance to do that. Yeah, I mean, one of the the nice things about Abacus, if you guys are, are familiar with FEA packages, is Abacus is pretty um, much considered the best finite element analysis package out there on the mechanical side. And one of their real, real strong points is contact and the way that they handle contact. So, um, you know, where in SOLIDWORKS simulation, you you uh, a lot of times run into like convergence problems on the, the Abacus side. Um, we haven't seen that. And again, this is a an example where we can take advantage of using brick elements, right? So, and again, if you if you do a lot of um, nonlinear analysis or you're um, familiar with FEA, a lot of times for nonlinear problems, people would prefer using bricks um, when, when it's feasible. And then the, the other example that I wanted to show you guys was um, a honeycomb structure. So this one is really, really cool. Uh, another place that you could potentially see some, some benefit is if you've got structures that are going through buckling and you wanna see kind of, you know, some post buckling behavior, typically in SOLIDWORKS, when a structure buckles, that's kind of the end of the simulation. Um, it, it has a really hard time running past buckling. And in this example, you can see you've got some, you know, a first kind of an initial buckling that takes place here. Then you've got some secondary buckling of some of these other um, portions of the honeycomb. And again, if you're this, the, the setup of this is really, really slick, right? Because you don't have to define, you know, a lot of contact pairs. For a problem like this, it's not really obvious what faces are going to be coming into contact, you know, depending on how this thing is displaced. A lot of these internal faces could come into contact, you know, depending on how the load's applied. Um, but in a problem like this, you can just use the general contact that's available inside uh, of the, the SSC solver. And again, this is a situation where we were able to take advantage of, oops, sorry guys, take advantage of a nice brick mesh for our honeycomb structure, right? And like Ryan mentioned, there's also the ability to do cloud computing. So for some, uh, and you, you can run up to 32 cores. So uh, if, you, if that's something that you're interested in, basically it creates a virtual machine, it uploads the model, it runs it you know, on the cloud. Uh, if you have really, really large models that are taking hours or you know, potentially tens of hours or days to solve, this is a way that you can really reduce your run times um, and free up your local resources, right? So. Uh, it's a nice feature for the the appropriate types of models. Do, do we know um, what the solve time was on this one offhand? Just curious. At the... guy, so I was running at this point. I was doing like local runs only, and this guy took about three hours to run. Okay. Yeah. Because this one, I mean, looking at it, a lot of degrees of freedom. I'm thinking sim premium. Yeah, I feel like that. Would, this one would take a, a day or longer if if it even does converge. You know, and it'd probably be probably have to use some nonlinear dynamic with it. Very yeah. And I mean, the, the downside, I mean, nonlinear dynamics is a great way to approach problems that have convergence on the, the static side, but, you know, it does add a lot of time to, to runs, right? So, um, you know, there's definitely a trade off. And, uh, you know, the, uh, a benefit of using SSEs, is you, you don't have to make that trade off in a lot of cases. Now, obviously, there are situations with like snap fits or um, where you might have to use like an implicit. Um, or an explicit solver or do some implicit dynamics, but uh, we've had some really good luck. And there, there are other classes of problems. Let me just show you um, guys a couple more that, Ryan, I think you were showing some of these in your press, in your presentation, but here's another, you know, just some other classes of problems that we've had really good success um, in, uh, you know, with this product. Again, the, a lot, some of these are problems that you could potentially run inside a solid, uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation premium, but 
um, you know, the time, um, as well as, you know, just having to tweak solver settings is something that can be a real pain um, yeah. on the software side. Yeah, I really don't know about that problem on the bottom right, especially that one, that one could be a tricky one, I think, to run in Sim Premium and yeah, yeah, yeah. do the other ones, but, okay. So, yeah, I mean, we're really excited about this. Just to give you guys a little bit of background, this is kind of the, in case you guys don't know, so Abacus, Dassault Systems is the parent brand for SolidWorks. Um, Dassault Systems owns Katia, it owns SolidWorks, it owns Abacus. Abacus, the, the brand Abacus is what we're calling Simulia now. So Simulia is actually responsible for the development of all of our simulation tools. So the SolidWorks simulation tools, this thing, you know, all of the flow and magnetic solvers that are part of the Dassault brand. Um, and this is kind of the first collaboration between SolidWorks and Simulia. Um, so you, you have really tight integration uh, with respect to being able to pull over models from SolidWorks. Ryan, you, you talked about the one-click connector, but that allows you to pull over not just the geometry into the 3D experience platform, but a lot of the solver settings. So material problem or material properties, boundary conditions, loads um, get pulled over automatically. So it reduces some of the redundant work um, if you were using like a, a, a product that was outside of the Dassault brand. Um, and this is just the first one, right? So we expect to see a lot more collaboration between the brands. Um, and, and that's exciting. It's, it's really exciting for people that are working in, in the simulation space here at Dassault because Simulia just has, you know, a, a really great product offering, um, you know, all, across all aspects of simulation. So uh, I'll hand it back over to you, Sean, and we can, mm -hmm. we can wrap up and um, start Sounds answering some questions. Sounds good. Um, let me change the presenter here. All right, so uh, to, to wrap up here, there's uh, some customer success stories. Uh, we have Insilixa, who uh, implemented SSC, and they produced results in about 40 minutes compared to uh, the results they got out of SolidWorks simulation, took them 21 hours, so big time savings uh, for their type of uh, problems that they're trying to run. Uh, another company in focus, Energy Services, Inc., saved tens of thousands of uh, dollars, months of time, uh, so, by, based on SSC being a faster to run, sometimes easier to converge too. And uh, also HIDAC, um, SSC, they feel there was a, clearly a superior solver for nonlinear analysis, uh, especially in that nonlinear static realm. So at this point, we'll open it up for any questions. So feel free to put those in the chat here. I don't have anything, any questions standing. Just kind of take another look through there, make sure. Mostly screen not updating stuff from a while ago. Okay, run through. Uh, all right, first question here. Can you run design studies in SSE? Can you run design? Uh, so, uh, Omar, I think uh, I might rely on you a lot for many of these questions. So that really capability know. is not, it, that's not available yet. Um, that's something that we envision uh, down the road, but right now you can't do design studies. It's really easy to create um, multiple simulations within an SSE study. Um, but if you're changing like geometry and you're running through like a sweep of geometry right now, that that's not available um, in, in, inside of SSE. I will point out a few, the in-focus story um, that you pointed out, Sean, is really, really interesting. So if you if you guys go out there and like Google in-focus and Simulia, um, they were, uh, I was involved in that one and they were running some really, really, really complex downhole drilling types of analyses. And when he says they saved months uh, of time, he means it. He was using, he, we let him utilize some cloud resources and runs that were taking like two days in SolidWorks simulation. Um, if they were able to get convergence in SolidWorks simulation, were taking like just a couple hours inside of SSC. And then they started doing some really, really complex um, kind of bearing analysis. So uh, it's a really interesting story. If you guys uh, have a minute, Google um, in focus in Simulia. Okay. Another question is, uh, can you, uh, can we export deformed shapes out of SSE? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I don't think that you can yet, but let me, uh, ask a, a couple other people, um, and get back to you. Okay. Uh, do we know what is the cost of maintenance? So this uh, this product is a yearly subscription, right? So um, 
you know, I think a lot of products are kind of heading that way now. You, you hear a lot from our competitors about using that. I mean, it, there's a quarterly lease model and then there's a yearly lease model. Um, so there, there, there really isn't a cost of subscription, right? You buy it, you own it for the year. And then, um, you know, if you want to renew in a year, you, you've got that option. So looks like that question's from David. David, uh, let's get you in touch with uh, one of the sales guys here. And we might be able to pin it down here for at least the yearly. And then uh, the same same kind of question to solve remotely. What is the charge? I think we'll we'll get you in touch with a uh, sales contact here. So let me take that down. Yeah, it's pretty minimal. I mean, it's pretty minimal. Um, if you're if you're doing large problems, if that's the class of problem that you're doing, you definitely want to take advantage of it, right? Um, and it's a, it's a low cost, and it's not. I mean, this is not. I, I this is something that's difficult for SolidWorks customers to to kind of comprehend because it's just SolidWorks kind of business model wasn't that. But if you look across the FEA world, being able to do high performance computing um, across using utilizing multiple cores is something that they're all charging for, and the rate of return um, is it, pretty linear. So if something takes an hour or 10 hours to solve on one core and you run it on 10 cores, it's going to take one hour. Um, so the, your, 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 uh, re, your return is really, um, uh, it's a good return for your investment. Okay. And uh, next question here, can SSE solve linear problems? If so, are there advantages over SIM premium? Uh, um, yes, it can do linear. Um, I don't, I would um, argue that it's probably, there are probably not a, a huge advantages. Um, yeah. Over linear, uh, I, I can't think of any. Yeah, I can't think of any either on that end. So mostly nonlinear on that side is what I'm thinking initially. Then uh, what do we got here? Is this software available now? How do I get it? Uh, yes, it's available now. And Brett, I'll I'll get you in touch with uh, your sales contact as well. Uh, so remotely. Would the software give us amplitudes of natural frequencies? I think so, right? Uh, there's some yeah, you can frequency there. analysis. Sure. Um, yeah, so it, it can do linear, some linear dynamics. It does frequency analysis, some modal analysis. It also does random vibe, right? Or no, it does harmonic. It doesn't do random vibe yet. But I assume that the rest of the, the linear dynamics are probably coming. So yeah, you can do, when you say amplitudes of, of frequent natural frequency, I think you're probably talking about harmonic. Mm -hmm. um, but it also does modal analysis, sure. Okay. Uh, offer? Do we offer training classes for this software? Sure. I mean, right now that the, um, yeah. we we do offer training classes. That's a shorter answer. The, yeah. the, the the frequency of them might not be something that's appealing right now. It might not be as frequent as as you would like. So what we're doing is for customers that purchase, we're we're offering a little bit more handholding and some one-on-one -on -one sessions with either your reseller or myself. Or I have a colleague on the Simulia side named Ryan who um, has been really, really helpful. So there, there are lots of ways that we can get you up and running with this tool, absolutely. Okay, next question. Uh, would, would there be any similar advanced version for flow simulation with more granular control? I think we're talking about XFlow here, I'm guessing. So yes, it's and it's a great question. So, uh, you know, at, on the SolidWorks side, we don't like, we typically don't like to talk about future, the, the, what the future holds. We kind of like to say, like, this is our product and this is kind of what it does. Um, that being said, there's been a lot of talk about um, XFlow and some of the flow tools that are available inside of the Simulia um, brand. And I would assume that within the next uh, 12 months, you're going to see a, a more high end flow offering. Um, come out and that's exactly XFlow. So if you go in and look up XFlow on the on the DS webpage, 3ds.com, or you just Google XFlow, um, you'll see some of the capabilities available. And I believe that that's going to be something that you'll see um, on the, the SolidWorks resellers um, start to sell and support. So it's an ex a really exciting time. Um, I think that you're going to see some real acceleration in the product offerings coming from um, SolidWorks. On the simulations. Next question asks about uh... Uh, Nitno material model, Nitno? Yeah, I see that you pulled it up. I thought that it was there. Um, it might be one that's, well, it could be in here. Uh, I think I'd see it under, oops, see it under mechanical for sure, right? Yeah. That's, well, let me just expand these all out. It's not going to be under hyperfoam anyway or none of these. So maybe. Is that, it under plasticity? So you think so? So let me try. Plastic. I wouldn't think it is because usually we solve it as elastic. 
Um, let me get back to you. I thought that I thought there was some talk of that being available, but I, I don't see it either. So, okay. Just so let me get back to you about that and the form shape. Yep. And, and you Brian have all these questions, so we can we can email way. you guys. Okay. Yep. Brian says no night no, yet. Yeah, no no. no. Okay. All right. So has more material models, but we might be missing one that Sim Premium has in there. I think we we got all the other ones covered. Okay. All right, and that's that's the end of the list for now. We'll pause for one. If anybody else has a question, here's a question. Simply fatigue. Uh, not yet. Not yet in SSE, right? I think that's you know, maybe. Yeah. Sort of... So I mean, a lot of these questions that you're asking, you know, the flow, the fatigue, the um, what was the one about like design exploration? There are products on the, the so on the Simulia side, like there's um, is I think it's called Eyesight. There's a, there's a um, there's a really good design optimization tool on the, the Simulia side, and there are some really good uh, flow tools on the Simulia side. And you're going to see a lot more collaboration between the brands um, in the coming months. So. so it's sort of like it's code that already exists, and they, they would just need to sort of copy it over. And they're not going to have to write it from scratch to be able to in, integrate it. Um, yeah. And if you look at, again, I, we don't like to talk about futures on the SOLIDWORKS side, but if you look, kind of look at the investments and acquisitions that the SO has made, they've purchased a lot of tools in the, sim, in the simulation space between flow and electromagnetics and um, acoustics. Um, so, and obviously with the, the Abacus uh, acquisition. So there are a lot of tools that have been acquired that it only makes sense to, to let um, to expose some of that stuff to the, the SOLIDWORKS customers, right? And the more we hear you guys asking for it, the more ammunition we have to, to start asking for that stuff. Another question here. SOLIDWORKS SIM had issues with cyclic pattern fixture. Does SSC have a cyclic symmetry fixture? I don't think it does, does it? It, uh, it yes. does. I think there were some issues with it in previous releases, but I, I believe yeah, it's, I think it's... SIM Premium had some issues with it too for a little no, bit I there. Think, I think SSC does. So if you Oh, if I go under the uh yeah, yeah, it does have cyclometry. You can see Ryan respond. Oh okay. It does? Got it. Yep. All right. Yeah, it was probably probably looked right over top of it. It's probably somewhere in here. Got planer there, maybe it's somewhere else. <laughs> I'll trust Ryan saying yes it has it. Um it's, yeah you gotta go to the oh yeah. okay. Very well. Anyway. Is there a way to model heat transfer problems in conjunction with nonlinear thermal interface materials? I think so. You thermal. can do a thermal analysis and then obviously take it in and do a nonlinear, sure. Yeah, because in Sim Premium, you know, we run the thermal and then we import it into nonlinear. And it was, yeah, I'm assuming you have the same kind of control in SSC, but maybe. Okay, yep. got it. Great questions, guys. I'm glad that the the audience is so engaged. Um, Keep them rolling. So Nobody's. If you have a question on the tip of your tongue, ask it before we conclude here. How would this benefit someone looking to do thermal analysis? So again, I mean, you can do thermal analysis inside of Sim Pro. So I, I would argue that, that that's not necessarily the class of problem that this is geared towards. Now, yeah. if you're running a thermal analysis that's you know, tens of millions of degrees of freedom. If it's a huge uh, okay. thermal analysis that's yeah. taking you know, days to run or tens of hours, well, then you might benefit from running it um, on the cloud. Or the Abacus solver in general is just faster, um, the, the way it's been written and the way that it utilizes um, CPU, CPU resources. So, you know, if you're running really, really long thermal analyses, it could potentially take less. But, you know, with thermal analysis, it's one degree of freedom per node. So even really, really yeah. large meshes tend to be pretty fast. Yeah, I think that unless you're doing radiation, right? If you're doing radiation, yeah. that could be a place where it can benefit. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you know if have we played around with the radiation modeling in SSC yet? Do we know if it does surface to surface kind of thing too in there? That's something we'll have to Yeah, it does. Take a look at. All right, cool. Other question here, maybe, is there a material model that would show breakage upon exceeding, say, a, a material property that has been exceeding a tensile stress or something? Yeah, so you're talking about like crack initiation and potentially crack propagation, and uh, no, that is not available yet. That's a really, really hard problem to solve. Um, 
There are some add-on products to Abacus that can do it. Abacus can do a little bit if you know kind of where the, the, um, the crack is gonna start or if you initiate the crack, there are some ways that it can do some crack propagation, but the uh, initiation or breakage of a material is a really hard problem and there are only a handful of tools that can, can do that. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's not gonna be added. That's such a niche thing that um, it's just, unfortunately, well, I, as an engineer, I think that would be really cool, but um, uh, it's not gonna be added, I don't think. It takes so much element, adaptive element refinement, I think, to figure out where that yeah, point is. Yeah, it's very, all right. Any other questions? Keep them rolling, guys. If you have any more on the tip of your tongue, we'll wait a moment here for that. And, All right, and if, uh, if you can't think of a question, you think of it later, feel free to email us. You know what, I don't have, uh, should I put my, uh, should I put it on the slide here? That's silly of me. Let me go ahead and do that yeah, now. You can throw mine up there too if you want, Sean. I don't mind getting emails. Or if you can email one of us, good. both of us. Um, yeah, I'll just put mine up there and then we can, if it's something over my head, I'll forward it to you, Omar, here. Let's see here. And then I can forward it to Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. So yeah, feel free to shoot us an email if you think of another question, you can jot it down and let us know. But uh, yeah, nothing else coming in yet. So I think, oh, we got another, uh, we got a oh, okay. Yeah, if you want a PDF for the presentation, shoot me an email and just request it and then I'll, I'll, I'll reply back with the slides. Okay, if anybody's interested in the presentation, just shoot me a quick email. I'll get it back to you. All right, so I guess we'll wrap it up at this point. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I appreciate you taking the time in the either for East Coast guys mid-afternoon or during lunch for you West Coast guys. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks, oh, thanks, Sean. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being so engaged. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to answering any other questions or being support however we can. Yeah, thank you very much, Omar, for, for helping out with this session. I appreciate it. Yep. See you guys. Have a good one.